Board of Park for 1600 hours. I now call this meeting of the Atlantic County Board of Commission to order in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act of the state of New Jersey. Adequate notice of this meeting of the Atlantic County Board of Commissioners was provided in the following manner. Published in the press of Atlantic City and mailed to the current and the Hamilton Gazette and has been posted on the bulletin boards in the county office building in Atlantic City, the Stillwater Building in Northfield, and the County Clerk's Office in Mays Landing. Uh, we'll have the opening prayer at this time. <clears throat> Almighty God, we ask thee to grant us the wisdom to walk in thy light and the courage to accept the responsibilities placed upon us. Guide us by thy truth, uphold us by thy power, and grant thy presence may ever be with us. Amen. 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 Please rise for the flag salute. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. <coughs> First order of business is the approval of minutes from our June the 6th meeting. I'll entertain a motion. Roll call. So, so we have a motion first. So roll call. That's a roll call. I'm sorry, roll call. You're okay. correct. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, Commissioner Kern is on her way. Okay. Ballas? Yes. Rafino? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Corey? Yes. Mr. Kern? Yes. Mr. Kern? Yes. Mr. Kern? Yes. Mr. Kern? Yes. Yes, right. Thanks. Here. Yes, we're here. Yes, I'm Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I say yes, or my wife calls my name. Good access. Now I'll entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of June the 6th. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion on the minutes? <laughs> no discussion. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Here. I mean, yes. Patrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Brislin? Yes. Right <clears throat> school must be out. Yeah, school's out, so now it's on. <laughs> yes, school's out. <laughs> so, <after> that, <laughs> I'll be funny next week. Next <laughs> month. Anyone in person would like to speak during public comments, please come to the podium, state your name, and the town you reside in. You will be provided up to three minutes to speak. If you are attending virtually, please type yes. And the resolution number in the question and answer box. Any items not listed on the agenda, you may speak during public comments. You will be called upon to speak and a request to unmute will be sent. Please state your name and the town you reside in. Move into our resolutions with our grants. Madam Clerk, please read number 319. For an application and acceptance from the New Jersey Department of Health for the program year 2023-2024 Public Health Infrastructure, Laboratories, and Emergency Preparedness Grant, amount not to exceed $383,572. Move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? Any public comment? Not. Call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Stace? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. Please read number 320. Amending resolution number 669 adopted on December 6, 2022, a grant application to the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the fiscal year 23 county aid annual transportation plan to include the replacement of the 8th Street Bridge BV2 and remove the Fire Road and Pinkston Avenue signalization project. No additional cost. Moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Bertino, I believe. Yes. Second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? Chair? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Jerry, you're the engineer. Right here. Jerry's yeah, here. Cool. Yeah. Diana. Okay. So, Hingston and Fire Road, is that now not going to happen? Or that's going to be being paid for some other way? Uh, I believe we'll be asking for funding again. Plans are still ongoing so they needed the money for the week two but both the mayo should be on if you want a broader explanation but we are still moving forward on signalization for hasten and fire yes okay you satisfied with that frank or should we bring doug on no i'm good folks there but he wants anything okay he wants to say anything all right doug 
Yeah, um, yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to push it into uh, next year's uh, um, DAT funding instead. Uh, we're just starting design, so it's going to be a while before we get to construction. Discussion. Okay. Any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read number 321. Current application and acceptance from the New Jersey Department of Corrections for the County Reentry Coordinators Program amount not to exceed $100,000. Second. 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 Public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read 322. Grant application and acceptance from the New Jersey Department of Health for the Local Public Health Overdose Fatality Review Team 2023, amount not to exceed $75,000. Second. By Commissioner Ballas. Second by Commissioner Gatto. In discussion. Any public comment? Please call the roll. Dallas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Okay, we have a um, couple of chapter 159s and they're in different spots. So I'll entertain a motion to combine and adopt 323 to 324. 344 to 330 to 345. Yes. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gatto, second by Commissioner Days. Any discussion on chapter 159s? Any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Alice? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Ridley. Yes. Please read 325. Professional services agreement to establish a pool of medical providers for the provision of medical services to inmates at the Atlanta County Justice Facility. Now, not to exceed seven hundred thousand dollars. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Corsi. Second by Commissioner Gatto. Discussion. Public comment. Please call the roll. Dallas. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Days. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Gatto. Yes. Parker. Yes. Risley. Yes. Please read three twenty six. Professional Services Agreement with Collier's Engineering and Design Incorporated for the provision of material testing services for various dam and transportation infrastructure related projects amount not to exceed $184,174. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gatto, second by Commissioner Curtino. Discussion? Hearing none, any public comment? Call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Curtino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read 327. Professional <clears throat> Services Agreement with Atlantic Prevention Resources to implement the Overdose Fatality Review Team, amount not to exceed $70,000. Second. Question <clears throat> Corsi, second by Question Bertino. Discussion? Hearing none, any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read 328. Amending resolution number 456, adopted on August 16, 2022, professional services agreements with various architects, engineers, designers, and other professional consultants from the 2021-2022 poll to extend the term date only, no additional cost. Second. Okay. By Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read 329. Renewal competitive contract with Atlantic Care Behavioral Health for the operation of a family success center. Now, not to exceed $292,009. Move. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Discussion? Public comment? Hearing none. Please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? You have stated in here. Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read 330. 
Renewal competitive contract with Center for Family Services for the operation of a Family Success Center, amount not to exceed $560,114. Moved. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? Any public comment? Any none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes, going into our bid contract, number 331, please. Bid contract with Kisby Lease Mechanical, limited liability company, trading as Kisby Shore Corp for the provision of HVAC upgrades at existing server buildings at five Atlantic County radio tower sites, amount not to exceed $253,000. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Discussion? Public comment? Any none, call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read 332. Bid contract with Chemical Equipment Labs to furnish and deliver rock salt to members of the Atlantic County Cooperative amount not to exceed $622,160. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? I have a question. Sure. We didn't have we used much salt last year, right? We didn't. So, but the contract priority, so we have to rebid. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, remember in our committee discussion, this was this was Greg saying that uh, we're going to make sure we don't have snow next week. Right. <laughs> <So. laughs> no snow or ice, right? Snow and shorts. Yeah. Any other discussion? Any public comment? Harry Nunn, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Uh, please read 333. Big contract with W.B. Sim Company to furnish and deliver miscellaneous office supplies to members of the Atlantic County Cooperative amount not to $204,127.80. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gatto, second by Commissioner Kirk. Horsey, any discussion? Public comment. Hearing none, call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Yeah, please read 334. Renewal bid contract with Primo Land Dairies, limited liability company to furnish and deliver milk and dairy products to members of the Atlantic County Cooperative. Mount not to exceed $134,905.83. Yeah. Second. Moved by Commissioner Kern, second by Commissioner Bertino. Any discussion? Hearing none. Any public comment? All roll, please. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read 335. Subgrant agreement with various Atlantic County municipalities for drug and alcohol education and prevention programs with focus on youth leadership amount not to exceed $40,617. Moved. Second. Yeah, that's Mr. Corsi, second by Mr. Kern. Any discussion? Any public comment? Excellent. Hearing none, please call the roll. Salas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. And please read 336. Payment in lieu of performance agreement with South Jersey Gas for restoration work along Bargain Town Road in Ape Harbor Township, amount not to exceed $50,575. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Parker. Second by Commissioner Gatto. Discussion. Public comment. <clears throat> Every none, call the roll. Dallas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read 337. Shared services agreement with the Atlantic County Sheriff's Office and the Folsom Board of Education to provide security services within the Folsom School District revenue generating. Move. Second. Move by Commissioner Corden. Second. second by Commissioner Parker. Discussion? Hearing none, any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes, please read 338. Memorandum of, of Understanding for the Atlantic County Workforce Development Board, Workforce Innovations and Opportunity Act, Local Plan, No Cost. Yes. 
moved by Commissioner Gannon, second by Commissioner Corsi. Any discussion? Any public comment? Please call the roll. Salas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Bays? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes, please read 339. Amending resolution number 460 adopted on August 16, 2022, a bid contract with Lambert Construction Limited Liability Company for the reconstruction of Farragut Avenue, County Route 660 in Mays Landing to include a five year warranty for the concrete work, no cost. Second. second. Okay, moved by Commissioner Gatta, second by Commissioner Kern. Any discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah, so I guess, uh, no. Um, what does this actually entail? What does what this warranty cover? Um, I haven't seen warranty on any of our right. constructions before. Hopefully, this is something new that um, you know, we'll get some of the other contracts. Diana, can you answer that? Or Doug? There was some concerns on the concrete work that was done. Um, so, I think they did come back and repair it before the closeout. But to be sure that no future issues arise, they decided to do this. It's where the, where the handicap ramps on the sidewalks to put in. I think it's the specific concrete work. So if they sink and crack, they're going to come back and fix them within the next five years. We do get maintenance costs for it, but this was addition to this. And no cost besides. Of course. Any discussion? Any public comment? Please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read number 340. EUS contract with insurance agencies incorporated to obtain flood insurance for county owned real and personal property located within various buildings throughout the county. Not, not to exceed $16,848. Move. Second. So, moved by Commissioner Gatto, second by Commissioner Kern. Any discussion? None. Any public comment? Please call the roll. Dallas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read 341. EUS contract with Glenn Insurance Incorporated to purchase a storage tank pollution liability policy, including terrorism coverage through Liberty Surplus Ironshore for the county's four underground storage tanks amount not to exceed $11,801. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gatto. Second by Commissioner Kern. Discussion? Any public comment? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Creed Pogue from Estelle Manor. Uh, it's been a while. Um, there had been talk about moving toward decommissioning the underground storage tanks. Uh, and I think if I'm remembering correctly, and I may not be, that there had originally been, I think, six. So I'm assuming that this means that we're down to four. But is there a continuing plan for uh, working? Yes, slow yeah. over number. And yeah. did we know what progress or what that time? Diana, can you comment? There are two contracts um, we're working with now, one on Hamilton Public Works, that's three or two, and one in Bray Workfield Public Works, that's two of the other two. Unfortunately, the manufacturing of the tanks is late project, but by the end of the year, we're hopeful for all these needs. Thank you. Very good. Any other discussion? None, please call the roll. Dallas? <clears throat> yes. Cortino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Chase? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes, please read 342. Sourcewell National Cooperative Contract with Safeware Incorporated to furnish and deliver emergency response equipment to the Division of Public Health amount not to exceed $568,000. Moved by Commissioner Bertino, second, I'm sorry, Commissioner Ballas, sorry, <clears throat> seconded by Commissioner Corsi. Any discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? 
Yes. Please read 343. Resolution authorizing the Atlantic County prosecutor to purchase undercover vehicles for confidential and upper, undercover investigations from Mall Chevrolet, amount not to exceed $70,000. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Parker. Any discussion? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Commissioner? Any talk about an alternative and an electric vehicle for this? I don't believe there was on these because of the way that they use them. I don't know what that means. They're used undercover sometimes. Electric vehicles can be mortgaged. I can't completely answer it, but I believe that was part of it. Last time, the reason was they aren't fast enough, and I can attest to it. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a Tesla. It would probably be fast enough, right? <laughs> Thank you, Diana. Any other discussion? Steering for you tonight. Yeah. I have a question. I'm going to support the resolution, but they're going to buy undercover vehicles. The question I would have, and it probably goes to the director, once they purchase these <clears> vehicles, <throat> do they turn in old vehicles? Auctions or just down through the departments? Um, that's still being evaluated by... Great Brookings and staff, but there will be two that are being turned in and depending on, I, I don't know the conditions, I do know that there's two being turned in, whether or not they'll be reshuffled and other ones would be optioned or if those two would be optioned. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any public comment? If not, please call the roll. Alice? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Moving on to 346, please. Change order number four with L. Ariazi Concrete Company for pedestrian traffic signal improvements of 28 signalized intersections along County Route 629 in Longport, Margate, Bedner, and Atlantic City. Net increase $295,765.10. Okay, Chair, will entertain a motion for adoption. Okay. Move. Second. All right. Leaving was Commissioner Kern. Second by Commissioner Corsi. Okay. Ms. Ballas. It was reverse, but it's okay. <laughs> I think Ms. Ballas first. Let me second. I'd say we're pretty mumbling. That side keeps mumbling over there for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, they mumble on that side. <laughs> All right. Any, any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes. The last meeting. We had we did a change order for some of the same work uh, road work that way, um, and I asked the question: Was that the last change order? Mm -hmm. So apparently not, right? Um, do we know this is the last change order? My understanding: This is not the last change order. So, and yeah, uh, if I may, Mr. Chair, sure. in your professional opinion, did they miss a lot of work? What was additional work to keep getting all these change orders? It was a big project from the door, and it needed to be done. Don't get, I mean, I get it. I'm just, I don't know how I am about change orders. I know how you are. Doug's on the line. He is the professional. Oh, you'll put it on Doug. Doug. Let's, let's, let's bring Doug on. Um, so there's there, there will only be one more change order after this, and it's the final change order which is usually just to adjust for as-built quantities. Um, this change order did, uh, change order number four, which you're voting on, has supplemental work, um, which included, uh, I think, uh, some temporary traffic control trailers uh, that was due to an issue with um, a conflict between the old traffic signal and the new traffic signal. When we were doing the construction, we were keeping the old signals on during construction, uh, but in this situation, we could not do that. Um, there was also some additional drainage work uh, related to change of plan number eight uh, for two intersections. Um, I believe one was at Washington Avenue and the other Melbourne Avenue, um, which we did not realize uh, we were going to have to do uh, drainage when we did the last uh, change order that uh, included drainage work. Okay. And you said it's one more after this. I'm going to hold you to it. Yeah, I mean, we're right now we're just doing punchless items, so I, I'm pretty, okay. pretty confident. At some point, um, Mr. Chairman, through you to the county administration, 
I like to do have him meet me out in that West uh, Winchester Avenue where there's some issues. Apparently, at a four way stop sign where folks are running the stop signs down there um, in Ventnor. Um, probably in the next couple of weeks, we make some arrangements to go down there. Well, I'll set it up to Jerry. You hear me? Yeah, I can get there. Yeah, I think you're staring at the screen. Uh, uh, I wasn't sure if you were talking to me or Diana. I'm sorry. Well, when, when, I wrote it down. There. Thank you. Okay. It's already, it's already taken care of, Doug. You were sleeping okay. at the switch. <laughs> you did say administration to regret. Right. Uh, any other discussion? <laughs> any public comment? Thank you. Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Dees? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Shadow? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Rosley? Yes. Okay, the next three resolutions are appointments. We'll entertain a motion to combine and adopt 347 to 349. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion on the appointments? Just want to thank those folks who dedicated and devoted their time for the county. Much appreciated. Any comments from the public? If none, please call the roll. Alice? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Stays? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. Okay. Please read 350. Resolution in support of an immediate moratorium on offshore wind development projects sponsored John W. Risley Jr. and Richard R. Dace. I'll move it. Second. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Bertino. Second by Commissioner Days. Mr. Chair. Yes. Discussion. Yes. So, you know, in, in light of uh, recent events, one mainly being the announcement of a federal investigation into, um, I guess, the impact of offshore wind development um, and subsequent conversations that you and I have had back and forth and with other uh, local elected officials, um, I would like to offer a few amendments um, to this resolution. Um, so we don't muddy the waters. I do think it's important that we attack this issue from multiple angles, uh, but I do want to focus more on, on that federal investigation and uh, what I said two weeks ago at a prior meeting, um, the expand, extension of the public comment period mm -hmm. um, from the, on the BOEM um, Office of Renewable Energy Programs. Um, so, I mean, I, at this time, I, I mean, the gist of this, I'm, I'm, you know, I would like to keep. Uh, I do want to change the, the title um, to more reflect, like I said, the current events. Our, our office was closed on, on Friday uh, due to the holiday. Other state offices, uh, legislative offices, were closed on, on Monday. Um, we don't meet again until July 3rd. Um, with the time period extension request in this, I do think it's important that we handle this now um, so we can get the, uh, our wishes to bomb and to the federal investigation. Um, they know where we stand with Delta Lake. So I would like to offer some amendments at this time if they're amenable. And, I do beg the patience of the board. All right, so um, the, the new tell, if we could strike an immediate moratorium and replace it with the U.S. GAO investigation into the impact of offshore wind and expansion of the public comment period. So the new tell would be Atlanta County Board of Commissioners resolution in support of the U.S. US GAO investigation and the impact of offshore wind and expansion of the public comment period. Um, um, and the second, whereas, uh, will strike seeking an indefinite moratorium on wind energy projects until satisfactory and replace it off after um, Ken Executive Dennis Levinson reinforcing the need for a, and then we'll go on to say review and assessment of all the impacts caused by the wind energy projects can be identified. Um, and then in the third paragraph, I was asked if we can be specific about the extension period. So at the end where it says, and everything is good up until I just want to add this, this board supports the coastal communities request for a 90 to 135 day extension. And then the next two warehouses are, are fine. If we can strike the sixth altogether. Again, the reason for this is I'm going to keep the focus. So we already, as the first whereas talks about how we supported a 90 day moratorium previously, um, we were completely ignored, um, as have other people been. But I would, so I would like to keep the focus on what was just announced on June 15th, this investigation. And then the only other thing I, I wanted to, in the 
Seventh, now therefore, could be constraint for a moratorium on offshore wind development projects pending. I just leave it how it says Senator Vince Pelosi in, in their demand for a thorough investigation. And then at the very end, you know, everybody that we're copying on, I would like to add um, Ms. Jessica Stromberg, who's of OEM Office of Renewable Energy Programs. I think it's important that, that she see this resolution. And that's it. Mr. Chair. Yes. I think those are a lot of changes. And I, I moved to table so that we can see them in writing and see what it looks like. The Senate motion table can move and second it. Table to end that discussion. We need to vote on the table. Did someone take this? Someone second. seconded it. Yeah, Mr. Corsi. Oh, did? Mr. Corsi seconded. So it's been a motion made and seconded to table. We'll have a vote on the table. This one. Okay. Can't discuss it. Discuss. Can't end discussion. Ballas? No. Bertino? No. Orsi? Yes. Bays? No. Patrick? Yes. Gatto? No. Kern? No. Parker? No. Grizzly? No. Okay, go back into discussion phase again. Mr. Chair? Yes. I can. Um, I just, I would support those amendments, Commissioner. Um, I really wanted us to do something specific around that um, comment period because we're in it. It's, I believe it started May 19th, um, and I think it's a very, very reasonable request, so I'm glad you're kind of beefing that up a little bit. And um, certainly, you know, I was glad to hear of the announcement of the um, federal investigation last week, so I think it's important that we really amplify that and um, get behind that. So I, I, I like the, the additional focus on those items. Mr. Chairman, if I can, I think the, the, the crowd is asking point of order for us to speak up so they can hear what we're saying. We They're having trouble hearing us. Here. We don't even know what's going on. Speak up. Mr. Chairman, if I may? Yes. So let me be very clear to the public and to my colleagues. A couple of weeks ago when this came up, I voted against it. Um, my position has not changed. As you indicated, there was a 90-day moratorium. did not happen. We understand the politics of it all. And so at the end of the day, I am I'm not objecting to additional questioning. So I want to be very clear. You're entitled to get answers, right? I don't mean I'm going to support it, but you're entitled to get the answers you're looking for. And I think that's a fair uh, request. Um, I'm glad you've moved, removed the moratorium um, because I was prepared to probably keep y'all here for the next four or five hours uh, because of the wording of a moratorium. And you have taken that off because I've had lunch and I was prepared to be here. Um, but um, that's fine. And I think the public entitled to public uh, uh, questioning and answers. Um, but uh, again, it didn't happen in the 90 days. Um, there are concerns out there. I get it. Um, but at the end of the day, this was not new. And I said at the other meetings, this was nothing that came up overnight. Everybody knew about it. Politics got involved. Folks knew about it. Folks got to know about it. Politicians got involved, wanted to play political football with it. And all of a sudden, it like it came out of the blue, right? It didn't happen that way. It's been talked about from the federal level down. When they decided to look at it, might have been a different story. Um, so be as it may, at the end of the day, I do believe that folks have a right to get answers to their questions. Um, but uh, again, I support the windmills. I get it. I understand. I've had a number of uh, well wash up on the beach of Atlantic City. Nobody has been able to prove it has anything to do with the windmills at this point. I'm not saying it doesn't. Nobody's come back to say it has been. Um, so again, I understand your amendments to the resolution. I'm more inclined to support your amendments because it's asking for additional answers. Uh, I do not support a more joy. And our discussion. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so just uh, for everybody's information, there is an opportunity to, an to ask questions about the Boehm report on Thursday at the Atlantic City Convention Center. Um, people can uh, go and uh, show up there and ask their questions. 
I still think that there are too many uh, changes in that resolution. I would need to see it in writing before I could uh, make a decision in, in favor of that. I think that um, we're, you know, we've been down this road before. There, there's the new GAO investigation. There have been, uh, there was an exhaustive application process by the uh, developers. There were uh, uh, studies done by NOAA. And it just seems like when people aren't getting the answers that they want, they, they keep asking. So we have three, three big um, organizations doing investigations now. I'm not going to support it. So, so Mr. Chairman, if I may, yes. so I understand my colleagues' concerns, but I would also remind the public and my colleagues that our attorney, as an officer of the courts, have to make sure that language is very specific and very clear. Failing to do so, his license is on the line. So as our attorney, <laughs> I take him, I, I, I got to lean on his judgment as an officer of the courts. And, and you raise a valid point. Um, I, I don't think that our attorney would do any clandestine, esoteric, mundane, deranged, decadent things uh, to a resolution that's basically asking for additional questions. So. Um, I did he had not let me down. No, I didn't say you said that. I'm just saying, in general, I don't think he has let us down. So I'm, I'm sure he will go by what the letter of law allows him to put in resolution. I, I would hope. With no doubt. But I I always like to put my own eyeballs on this. My suit. If I may. Mr. Yes, Chairman. I would tell yes. you that you don't have the floor yet. Yes. Let me talk, please. I'm Judge Chairman. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my thought would be, I could read to you what I think was just said by Rich. If I read my hand, read it correctly. Yeah. And then you you all could then have a sense of what the changes would be in reference to the copy that's in the packet. And then you all could decide whether or not to make a motion to amend it according to what I read to you, right? So you hear me out. I read it. You say, okay, we're good. We understand it. We're, we're going to make a motion to amend or not. It's up to you all. If the motion to amend passes, then you make a motion to adopt it as amended, at which time, you know, you'd go through the process of your own comments, public comment, and then approval it if you deem the vote that way. That's my suggestion in light of what I just heard. Um, I'm not sure about the esoteric stuff, but just generally, <laughs> you know, I think that's responsive to what you all just said, but, you know, I'll be guided by what you all want to do. Thank you. Air um, discussion before we have Rick read some things. Yeah, I'm just going to make a comment. Sure. That, you know, I believe it's important for us to find out, you know, what's happening off our shores uh, before we make, you know, any problem worse. You know, it, the public is certainly entitled to have more information. And I believe as public officials, it's our responsibility to make it possible for that information to be made you know, available to anybody, you know, looking for that. Uh, therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm voting in favor of the resolution you know, after it's read, um, as it's clearly necessary for all of us to have a better understanding and for our public to have a better understanding of what's going on. Okay. Any other discussion on the amendment? All right, so I don't want to cut anybody off. Everybody okay? All right, so what I have is if, if you look at the, the resolution that's in the packet, if I understood Commissioner Dace's proposal, the potential motion to amend would be as follows. The title becomes Atlanta County Board of Commissioners resolution in support of the USGAO investigation into the impact of offshore wind and the extension of the public comment period. That's the title. The second, whereas paragraph will now read as follows. Whereas the Board of Commissioners has received communication from County, from County Executive Dennis Levinson and uh, reinforcing the need for a review and assessment of all impacts caused by the wind energy projects. Does that sound correct? Sounds correct. Yeah. Right. I'm only confirming it with you all as we go, so you know what you're voting on, right? It's just not fair, particularly in light of what uh, Commissioner Patrick was saying. Um, I just want to make it clear. So then the third whereas, which it, the third whereas provision would be as is accepted as the following sentence. So the body stays the same. The board supports Brigantine's request 
for a 90 to 135 day extension. The six. I think, I'm sorry, I said, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Commissioner. Well, I think I originally said pretty the coastal communities request because we did receive letters from Longport, Ventnor, and Margate as well. Okay, can you reread the, the file? Yeah, so this board, I think it, yeah, the board supports the coastal communities request for a 90 to 135 day extension. The coastal communities. I did say bring it to you, Commissioner. I may have confused it. It's fine. <clears throat> All right. So then the third whereas provision would just add the following sentence. This board supports the coastal community's request for a 90 to 135 day extension. Yes. The, the fourth whereas provision remains the same, seeing the fifth that remains as is in the, in the packet right now. The sixth whereas provision gets deleted. The first now, therefore, be it resolved, shall read as follows. The Atlanta County Executive Dennis Levinson and the Atlanta County Board of Commissioners support Congressman Jeff Andrew and State Senator Vince Palestina in their demand for a thorough investigation into the cause of unprecedented whale deaths and other potential disruptions related to offshore wind development projects. That's the whole paragraph. Okay? Yes. The final paragraph would simply add the following name to the provision that currently exists. And that would be, and Miss Jessica Stromberg, BOEM Office of Renewable Energy Programs. Does that sound correct, Commissioner yes. Dace? Yes. All right, so that's what you would potentially vote on if you want to vote to amend the current resolution. I make a motion to amend as read. Second. Okay, it's been in. Motion has been made and seconded to amend resolution 350. Any further discussion? On the amendment. On the amendment, yes, on the amendment. Okay, if there, if there being no further discussion, we're going to have public comment now. Correct, Rick? Yes, you can have on public comment on the amendment. On the, on the resolution as amended? Or yeah. do we yes. need to vote on the amendment? Well, they we need on the amendment. We just vote on the amendment. Yeah, you, you want to first. You want to vote to whether or not you're going to amend it, and then secondly, you're going to vote to to confirm it. And at that point, they'll be able to comment on on whatever it is because it's not even before you yet. Okay. If that makes sense. So you're going to simply vote on the amended resolution if you choose to amend it. All right, we'll Mr. Get Chairman. A, so we, we need a second. One second. second. We need a motion to second. I, I made the motion to amend. Right. Nice. And then there was okay. a second to amend. Parker seconded. That opened. Moved it. Parker seconded. All right, to amend. To amend. Yeah, now we'll have to vote, vote on the amendment. Now, just one second. We'll vote. We'll open it to the public at this point, or do we need no. to? You, yeah, yeah you want to vote on the amended resolution. On what you're going to change. As amended. Correct. And then all the public will subsequently have an opportunity yes. to have right. comment before you approve right. anything. Then we'll entertain a motion to adopt. Adopt. Yeah, right. This is. This is the vote to adopt as an amendment. No, amend. this no, is no, the no, vote no. Just to amend. amend. Okay. As you just read it. Just to amend. Okay. Correct. Just, yeah. just and then there's another amendment. Correct. Correct. We'll correct. Then it would be adopt the amendment. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Salas? Yes to the amendments. Fortino? Yes to the amendments. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Abstain. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Okay, so that's the amendment. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. If I doubt it, we've made these amendments that are all over the place. Can uh, somebody read what the real resolution is from the first whereas to, I don't really care who it's getting copied to, but right. the body of, because okay. I don't have it in front of me and I okay. I'm taking all the notes. Rick, you want to take a stab at that? You want to read it from the beginning? Commissioner Bowles, so, okay. so we know what we're voting on, and so yeah, the public knows what we're voting on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try to speak loud. I, I can see you all back there, right? Yeah. Part of my, if I can't read my own handwriting. The, the Atlanta County Board of Commissioners resolution in support of USGAO investigation into the impact of offshore wind and the extension of the public comment period. That's the title. Whereas in February of 2023, the Board of Commissioners acknowledged and supported United States Congressman Jeff Andrew and State Senator Vince Palestina calling for a 90-day moratorium on offshore wind development projects to allow for a proper investigation into the cause of unprecedented whale deaths and other potential ecological disruptions 
related to the offshore wind development projects. And whereas the Board of Commissioners has received communication from County Executive Dennis Levinson reinforcing the need for a, re a review and assessment of all impacts caused by the wind energy projects. And whereas the Board of Commissioners has received communication from a number of coastal county governments, along with municipal mayors and council members that want definitive answers on the impact of offshore wind energy projects, and there are multiple requests to extend the time period for public review and comment on the 6,200 page draft environmental impact statement, otherwise known as DEIS, for the Atlantic Shores South Offshore Wind Project. And this board supports the coastal community's request for a 90 to 135 day extension. Whereas majestic animals continue to watch ashore in unprecedented numbers, with the number of dead whales found along the New Jersey shore, I'm sorry, the New Jersey coast tripling since February of 2023, and whereas conflicting data about the size, number, and distance of windmills from the shore has come to light. Wind energy project costs, production, and actual energy savings for customers have been questioned without sufficient answers, and there continue to be unanswered questions about impact on tourism, fishing, the environment, and the local economy. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Atlantic County Executive, Dennis Levinson, and the Atlantic County Board of Commissioners support Congressman Jeff Van Drew and State Senator Vince Palestina in their demand for a thorough investigation into the cause of unprecedented whale deaths and other potential disruptions related to the offshore wind development projects. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution shall be distributed to U.S. Congressman Jeff Van Drew, U.S. Senator Cory Booker, U.S. Senator Robert Menendez, Governor Philip D. Murphy, State Senator Vince Palestina, Assemblywoman Claire S. Swift, Assemblyman Don A. Guardian, and Ms. Jessica Stromberg, BOEM Office of Renewable Energy Programs. That is the entirety of the new draft resolution that you would be voting on. <clears throat> So, Rick, at this point, it's been amended. It's been amended. You will now have the opportunity to make any comments you want. You'll open it up for public comment, and then you will make a vote to approve or not approve, or I should say adopt or not adopt, the amended resolution. Before I mean to open the meeting to the public, anyone have any comments they'd like to make on the board here? Rick, do we need a formal motion to adopt to open the discussion? No. No, you just... Like any resolution? No. Like any resolution... Motion second discussion. Oh yes, you do. Yeah, you get. Yeah, you make a motion to adopt the res. That hasn't occurred yet. I got lost in. Yeah. I don't, is there a motion on? You motion? just you just read it. We should now make a motion. Yeah. I can't. I, I, yes. Yeah. That, yes. That's all right. Yes. Yeah. I do want to make a comment. Sorry. Permission, okay. uh, Chairman. Should we? Well, second. Just have the vote first. Yeah. We have to vote on. No, 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 no vote. Just just I make a motion to right. adopt. The and amended you, resolution just read. Second. Now there's a second. Now there's a discussion. Right. 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 discussion. From the Parks and Environment, I want to be clear and on the record, this is not uh, my comment. This is from one of the committees that I am liaison to from Parks and Environment. They sent me their comments, and I'd like to read them for the record. It would be hard to imagine a more essential environmental issue on which our board, Parks and Environment, ought to advise county government. <clears throat> the first article below is from today's Press of Atlantic City. Perhaps none of us has the technical expertise to assure our commissioners that the current state, the current state of background research is sufficient for construction to proceed. But I would hope that we are agreed in our understanding that one, the whale problem is not related to current offshore wind activities, and in fact, would benefit from offshore wind energy production by reducing global warming. Two, there is evidence that the visual pollution would be negligible. Three, the effect on the fishing and tourist industries should be easily predictable from the experiences of similar completed projects worldwide, and four, similar for the possible medical effects 
of buried high voltage cables. That's from Parks and Environment. Any other discussion? Commissioner Ballas. More just, more just a question. Um, in there where it says that um, County Executive Dennis Levinson supports this, can we vote on what he's without him voting on that? Can, can we say that? Well, as you know, he drafted a letter to the governing body here uh, with those comments. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, I think it was like memorializing yeah. what the letter. Yeah. I just, I mean, the way it started, yeah. I just, I didn't know we can actually vote on without him having a vote here, <clears throat> what he says. No problem. Any, any other discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. I have some notes. The American Petroleum Institute is calling for lifting restrictions on oil and natural gas exploration and drilling along the outer continental shelf, which runs about three miles off the coast of New Jersey. Uh, one of my first resolutions in 2018 after being elected to this board was to oppose drilling off New Jersey shores. This board tabled, a polite word for killing the resolution, as the majority uh, stuck with the uh, leadership in, in their party. It was the Trump administration that proposed drilling off of the coast of New Jersey in on the coast of the east coast of the United States, except for Florida. So, uh, but after that vote happened, one of my colleagues pulled me aside and said, do you think any, any of us want drilling? So that left me a little confused. Um, the connections between groups like Save Long Beach Island, the American Coalition for Ocean Protection, and the Caesar Rodney Institute are well documented. Caesar Rodney Institute is connected to Coke Industries. Uh, let's see. Uh, there was something called the Anitra oil spill at the mouth of the Delaware Bay just before Memorial Day weekend in 1996, and 50 miles of New Jersey coastline were affected, causing tar balls to wash ashore in Stone Harbor, Avalon, Sea City, Ocean City, Longport, Margate, Venner, Atlantic City, Brigantine, and Holgate. The spill also directly harmed piping plovers during a period when most plovers are involved in nesting along with many other bird species. In 2010, New Jersey passed the Bipartisan Offshore Wind Energy Development Act with Governor Christie's approval, creating incentives for the development of offshore wind energy in New Jersey. At the time, Governor Christie said a few months ago, I was at the Jersey Shore talking about my renewed feeling regarding no offshore drilling in New Jersey. And also, I didn't want liquefied gas off the state of New Jersey's coast either. It makes sense for us to go in this direction, not only because it's good for the environment, but because it's going to help us create jobs. The synergy of economic benefits in South Jersey and achieving renewable energy goals is a true win-win. As we work toward meeting Governor Murphy's renewable energy goals and President Biden's national offshore wind agreement, we must keep in mind the opportunity cost of delaying these critical projects. Already some jobs intended for Salem County were displaced to Maryland. Uh, let's see. Uh, the three proposed offshore wind farm projects are est estimated to inject $4.7 billion into the state's economy and create over 10,000 jobs, including thousands of union construction jobs. And please let her speak. One New Jersey offshore wind developer has signed a deal to use all union labor for its projects along the East Coast. Developing offshore wind farms enables us to continue pioneering the path to 100% clean power by 2035 by providing 7,500 megawatts of renewable energy, enough to power more than a third of the homes in the state. This is a massive step towards securing the governor's goal of 11 gigawatts of offshore wind energy by 2040, which could power 3.2 million homes. I have, I have a lot more, but I uh, just uh, ha have a couple of more. If you'll indulge me for one moment, I'll skip over a lot of this stuff. 
Um, over the first two months of this year, more than 80% of Facebook posts that mentioned wind energy contained misinformation about offshore wind farms and whale populations, according to a report released March 23rd by the nonprofit Media Matters for America. So there have been a lot of questions that I've been heard, none asked of me directly, but here's my opportunity to answer them. 50, about 50% 50 of the turbine is going to be underwater. They're 15 miles out because that's where the perfect location. Uh, please, please, please. Patrick has the floor. They're 15 miles out because that's where the perfect location, our close and relatively shallow continental shelf lies. They are not lit 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They are equipped with radar, which detects aircraft and lights until the aircraft is out of range. The jobs created are American jobs, hopefully. Atlantic Cape Community College and Rowan University already have training institutes up and running. The motors are direct drive, no gears, which require messy maintenance, and they are made by GE. They're, the brand name is called Haliod X. So the question is, you know, what do you want? Offshore wind, 15 miles out, and yes, the earth, the coast curves, so at some points it is going to be a little closer, or oil rigs, three miles out. One of these choices will... One of these choices will help alleviate rising sea levels, which should be very important to the people in this room. The other choice will continue the destruction of our environment while those corporations are laughing all the way to the bank because they know and knew since the 1950s what burning fossil fuels would do to the environment with amazingly accurate predictions. But they hid that knowledge as long as they could. Please. And that is all. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. the time. Anyone else in the governing body would like to make any comments? Okay, I have a couple. First of all, I question the whole economics of uh, wind power. I question that greatly. I've looked at the numbers. It don't make any sense to me, quite frankly. I'm not convinced that this that these windmills that are in our, in our best interest. But before we get to that point, we have a number of questions that have to be answered before we even get to that question. And that's whether or not our, our economy, our oceans, our fishing industries are going to be damaged in some way. And that's very important to us here. We have to focus on the fishing industry and all the things that go with that. So for that reason, uh, uh, I'm, I'm very skeptical, very skeptical about wind power. And um, I'm looking forward to what I hope to, to see is a nonpartisan viewpoint from the GAO. I hope they report, give us a, a good report with good answers, honest answers, so that we can all determine what's, you know, in our best interest in our county. Anyone else like to speak? I just have one yes. thing. As I said before, I think it's it's clearly necessary that we get a better understanding. The public get a better understanding. We get a better understanding of what is going on off our shores in our county. We need informational sessions. I do believe there is one coming up next week. I apologize, I don't have that information, but I do believe there's one being live streamed. Whatever information is out there, I think it's important that all of us throughout our community, anybody online, but you have the information out that there are sessions like this going on and they're strictly informational. Anyone else before we go to the public? Rick, at this point, I can open the meeting to the public. Comment. All right. Uh, we're going to open the meeting to the public. A uh, couple rules. Uh, three minutes. We're going to try to let everybody speak who likes to, who wants to speak. That's important. And uh, if there's any spokesmen here for any particular groups, 
Um, we'd like to have them as well. And uh, of course, we'd also ask that if a point is made that um, if you can not remake the point over and over and over, that would be appreciated. So it has to be about this resolution. Of course. We're, all topics about Yeah, we're talking about this, this resolution. resolution. Yes. As, as amended. As amended. So with that, I invite anyone like to come to the podium and give your name and address and speak your mind. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, my name is Keith Moore. I'm from Brigantine, New Jersey. Uh, first, on, on behalf of thousands of residents in Brigantine, uh, we want to thank you for putting this resolution up for a vote. We think it's important that we continue this narrative. However, based on these amendments, I personally feel that basically a lot of the teeth have been taken out of this with regard to being able to stop this thing until we get answers. We believe that the devastation of the marine environment, the commercial and recreational fishing, our tourism, and subsequently our beach economies uh, will basically destroy life as the way we know it today. This project continues to go unabated. We've gotten no answers from the federal or the state governments. We've gotten nothing but trouble from Trenton with regard to Governor Murphy passing executive order, orders to chain this thing down our throats. And nothing's changing. Until we get a stop or an injunction on this thing, this program will progress until it's too late to do anything. So again, I want to thank you for doing what you're doing this evening, but I think we really got to look at how we get the answers first. We believe the only way that's going to happen is through some type of a stop or injunction on this thing to force these companies and the government to do the right thing. That's, that's you know, at least my position. Again, our strength lies in numbers. We have hundreds of thousands of people that are concerned about this. I think that number could easily go into the millions this some, summer as we continue to get the word out with regard to this thing. So I'm asking, again, if you would reconsider putting a moratorium forward, not maybe at this point, but at another time where we can actually put the word stop in this thing to get the answers. Because it's clear we're not getting any answers at all. And this thing will continue unabated until we are able to do so. Thank you very much. Hello. My name is Lori Goldsmith, and I have a member of the um, Listening to, I, I I'm sorry, listening to Mrs. Fitzpatrick, your, your speech. There's a point where you said they're 15 miles out. They're not going to be 15 miles out. The newspapers, everyone continuously misrepresents how far out they're going to be. They're actually going to be 8.7 miles to break a team. So I have a bill on page, if you'd like to see exactly how far it is, it's page from one of their reports that they just had. It was page 16 of 146 that I read, and it actually has the turbines. One or 8.8 .8 miles off the Brigantine, which is the focus of the viewer's attention. I wasn't going to say anything about anything today, but I just want to clarify how close they are and that every newspaper article is having that, that they have the wrong, the wrong distance. But I thank all of you for putting this forth and hopefully together. There's a lot of people that support stopping this and looking into it and finding out why the dolphins and whales are being killed, and just to make sure that, you know, we're all representing here. So, just want to even know how far out they are. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, um, my name is Dr. Philip Pepe. I'm a retired marine scientist. I live at Six Horizon Lane in Brigantini, New Jersey, and I urge you to vote no on the moratorium. I support offshore wind. I will help, it will help reduce our massive carbon footprint and represents economic opportunity and community benefits. The Atlantic Shores project can drive New Jersey's clean energy future and will contribute to the state's renewable energy goals by providing enough clean energy to power an average of a half a million homes. 
Atlantic shores will help New Jersey reduce the rel its reliance on polluting fossil fuels <laughs> while providing clean and reliable energy and infrastructure enhancements to the Garden State. Responsible offshore wind development projects like Atlantic Shore should be moved forward with the urgency that the climate crisis demands. I urge you to support Bohm in sticking to its published schedule for Atlantic Shores and making the project a reality. And for these reasons, oceans have absorbed 90% of the heat caused by human-induced climate change, according to NASA. But the, that benefit comes with a devastating cost. The globe's oceans have become warmer and more acidic over time. Sea levels are rising. <coughs> Ocean deoxygenation is occurring. Changes in fish migration and marine food webs are occurring. This has contributed to whales straying into shipping lanes and promoting deadly <coughs> collisions. High tide flooding across the Jersey Shore is likely to increase about eightfold or, uh, or more by 2050, particularly in destinations such as Sandy Hook, Atlantic City, and Cape May. Atlantic City will increase from its current average of between 9 and 15 high tide flood days to 75 to 110 flood days by the middle of the century, as predicted by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Oceans have absorbed a, ma a massive amount of carbon dioxide generated by humans. New Jersey's net greenhouse gas emissions were 97 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent in 2018. Scientists have cautioned that oceans cannot absorb emissions forever. There will come a time when the water bodies grow so warm that they begin to emit carbon dioxide instead of absorbing it. Sea level rise and seashore subsidence will erode our marshes, releasing even more carbon that's been sequestered by them. A clean energy future will have to include a transition to electric vehicles, placing more demand on electric generation. Offshore wind can help fill this growing demand for electricity with a minimal increase in our carbon footprint. <clears throat> far less than the burning of additional fuel. New Jersey has some more miles of roadway per square mile of land area than any other state. And the petroleum dependent transportation sector consumes more energy than any other in the state, accounting for 30% of the state's energy consumption in 2020. Offshore wind farms have many of the same advantages as land-based wind farms. They provide renewable energy. They do not consume water. They provide a domestic energy source, they create jobs, and they do not emit environmental pollutants or greenhouse gases. As highlighted in the draft environmental impact statement, many of the impacts on the resources of the Atlantic Shores project will be negligible, minor, adverse, or even beneficial. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Anyone else like to speak? Hi. Yes, sir. Uh, Jeff Gary Wolf, resident of Northfield, uh, right here. Um, I have an environmental science degree. It was back in 1974 when they were talking about uh, <clears throat> cooling, actually, and it was coming an ice age. Uh, so I've lived down here for over 50 years now. Uh, I, I value the oceans and what resources we have here. I also have a lot of experience in seafood safety and the environment, including shellfish. I don't know if anybody realizes it, but here in New Jersey, every time there's a can of clam chowder, whether it's Campbell's, Progresso, or whatever, those ocean cohogs and surf clams were harvested off of New Jersey. So it's a big industry. You see the boats right outside the casino in Atlantic City. There's some docks in Point Pleasant. They employ a lot of people. There's areas now they're not gonna be able to go to to transfer those clams, okay? I also worry about what they're going to do to, obviously, the whales and dolphins. I've lived down here, like I said, for over 50 years. I don't think it's a coincidence, but we need the answer. So I appreciate what the, the board is doing here, and I also agree to the moratorium and have some more teeth to it, but this is a good start. Uh, what it might do to the tourism uh, industry is going to, again, cost jobs. Uh, so... 
you want uh, energy that's uh, not going to produce any carbon, how about a nuclear power plant? We've had experience with that for many decades in New Jersey, very safely. That was years ago, we even safer now. And that doesn't emit any pollution. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Rich Fairley. I live in Northfield, 2207 Grove Road. <clears throat> I'm here to state that um, I'm 100% against the windmills. I've gone to numerous uh, presentations, probably about 14 or 15 up and down the coast, and heard testimony of the detrimental effects that the windmills can and will cause. I fish in the oceans probably every weekend, and this gentleman uh, just highlighted it as well. The, the negative effect of tearing up our ocean bottom uh, with uh, my understanding about 9,000 miles of cable intertwined uh, in our uh, ocean bottom. I think the effects, if they go in, will be irreversible. And wind energy in itself is not efficient. The wind doesn't, I'm, all, I'm out there all the time. It's not consistent. I personally don't think uh, it was ever meant to be a main source of uh, uh, to provide uh, energy. John, your comment, uh, Mr. Grizzly, your comment about the economics of it, it's still, they still have not uh, substantiated that it makes economic sense. I do not believe it does. So uh, for that reason, I, I don't think it, uh, it makes sense there. Um, my understanding is that the cost uh, to the consumer can almost triple or quadruple of what we're paying for uh, right now. The um, I would like a little bit more teeth, as uh, some of the people um, have indicated there in, in the resolution here. K Bay County uh, is in the forefront of this issue. And what I'd like to see is uh, to stop it and to, uh, to propose to stop it because we're being ignored by the governor of this state. He's ignoring each and every town. I've lived along the coast. I lived in Ocean City, lived in Avalon, and they shut our uh, opinions down. That is not a democracy. We're, we, the people, are speaking up, a lot of us, and we, we want to be heard, and we should be heard in a democracy. So what I'd like to see is a little bit more teeth and in the conclusion of, of the study, if it indicates uh, uh, all these detrimental effects, we should be willing to file lawsuits like the similar uh, Cape Bay County and a lot of the lawsuits. That, in my opinion, uh, is the only way to stop this. Um, I don't know particularly with what the most effective lawsuit is, but we have to really come out this full steam ahead because it's going full steam ahead against us. So um, I think it's important that we uh, come out now with the strongest fight that we can because time is beyond of the essence. So thank you, but I would like to see a little bit more teeth in there. Yeah. Name and address, right? Oh. <laughs> My name is Sunny Vargas. My address is 7 Nautilus Boulevard in Fort Hill River, New Jersey. So that's Ocean County. I'm your neighbor to the north. I'm also representing the New Jersey Windworks Coalition today. Yes. Please. We, we have to give consideration to people in Atlanta County first. Speak. I think someone from Cape May County spoke. Did they not? No. 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 That was a little boy. So okay. please, I don't mean to be rude. Okay, but I can have I hold to... it till the end? Yeah, please. Okay, so Let's... we do represent some groups that I are in Atlantic County. But we have to give deference first to Atlantic County people to speak. No problem. All right. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Tim Grebel, Bender City, New Jersey. I'll be very brief. And I, I just want to thank the, uh, the Commission of the Board to, um, for struggling with this issue. Um, for someone myself, uh, uh, vendor supports the the, um, the, 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 the the Mr. Levinson and the and the, the decisions to take a pause and look at this issue, and and, and for someone who who likes to uh, create energy and commerce in our city, speaking on behalf of those people, there just doesn't seem to be enough answers to the questions to put on the scale for this type of support. 
Um, there's, and I and I, I will try not to, to to repeat what's been said, but when you when you when you when you spend the time to educate yourself about this decision, there um, the increase uh, it, this this these wind these windmills won't solve the electric electricity needs that are just growing exponentially in, in our in our area in our country. But the indirect sound impact on dolphins and whales, the Department of Defense um, interrupting radar, these and you can debate all of these issues and negatives, and but but the amount of negatives and the unanswered questions just makes it a point where you have, you almost are obligated to take a pause for something like this until these questions are answered. Um, the effects on residential, on, on recreational fin fishing, the hindrance of search and rescue, the construction impact to the environment, the sound impact below the waterline, the negative tourism impact that hasn't been really described in detail, at least to the, to the general public, um, unknown impact of surface winds, unknown um, uh, you, the, you, the, 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 the utility costs that seem to be able to are, are predicted to skyrocket. Um, what happens during a hurricane, the possible ca catastrophic failure? Um, what happens to the, to, the, to the currents and the effects of, these are things that are gonna affect our, our area for a long time to come and they really need to be um, vetted. Thank you. Thank you. I'll let Tara do it. Uh, Creed Pogue from Estelle Manor. Um, I think one of the first things is for the members of the general public that are here, and I say this with all due respect to the sponsors and other supporters of the resolution, but to some extent, folks are being sold a bill of goods. The county, yeah, you may not applaud me next, but we'll see. The county does not have the authority to do a moratorium. They don't. If they, as individuals, want to make public comment, they can go ahead and do that. But there's no authority for a moratorium. The county doesn't have it. Cape May doesn't have it. None of the county and the state have that authority. And yet we're acting like, oh, this is going to be this big thing. And as Commissioner Fitzpatrick talked about, it was just a few years ago. Resolution was brought forth to talk about what was then a clear and present danger of offshore dwell drilling. Because the President of the United States wanted it to happen. Other places fortunately fought. This void <clears throat> was not one of them. Whether that was being afraid of offending the orange man Maybe yeah, I guess I said, Mr. Chairman, I knew I was going to lose some support there. <laughs> but in all seriousness, let's just keep the public comment to the person talking and have a civil conversation about the topic. Every time. Possibly time, but that's a Go I'm, ahead. I'm sure Terrell will take care of well, it. Anyway, and I'll sit, no, you're fine. In all seriousness. But here, we're having groups of people who I thoroughly believe are well intentioned. They're also grossly misinformed. <laughs> Passion and loud voices do not change the fact that two and two still is going to equal four. When you make a laundry list of possible impacts that haven't happened in any other wind programs around the world, because it is not just here, it is many other places. Some of them are on land, some of them are in the ocean. And yet all of those things that we're being told to be worried about, they don't quite happen. And the economics are in favor of renewables, not the other way around. Again, people may not want to hear that. They may have their facts that aren't really facts, but those are the truth. I mean, you got people who tell us that 9-11 was an inside job, the chemtrails, or a thing, windmills are going to cause cancer, et cetera, et cetera. Again, you don't have the power to do anything about it. I would ask that you not pass this because all you're doing is catering to the worst instincts. And if you don't like uh, some of the other stuff that happens, increase in sea level, 
I'm sure will have a very bad effect on tourism and this economy. Thank you. Dreadful. Awesome. Dreadful. Okay. It's just, there's a process. People can speak in the public forum without arguing. Everybody will get their opportunity if they need it. Sorry. Hello. Thank you for listening, and thank you for today. Um, my name is Rhonda Alessandro in Galloway, New Jersey, and I'm speaking on behalf of the citizens in opposition um, in Atlanta County. First, I thank um, this will devastate our coastal communities. Marine life destroy everything we love about the Jersey Shore. The project will be the tallest, 1,050 feet tall. They're not buried half in the ground. They are 300 feet taller than Ocean Resort Casino. They will be, the, the turbines out there right now, the ACUA about a little over 300 feet tall, just to give you a feel. 1,050 feet tall. This will be the tallest, <coughs> largest, greatest in quantity, and closest to shore at eight Point seven miles, not Miss Fitzpatrick. Fifteen, eight point seven miles, one thousand fifty. We are a huge ass experiment. If you're all happy about that, you know, it used to be cool to hey, address us. I'm Wait, sorry. Hey, it used to be hey, cool. No it used to be cool to you know stand up for what's right. Now we're all bowing down to the government, whatever they want. This is our coast. This is our community. Ecosystem, fisheries, people are going to be talking about jobs, thousands, I know thousands, I know hundreds of people, they're on the coast, they are scared, they're shaking in their pants, they're going to lose their, they're going to lose their jobs, they fish, it's been in their family for years and years and years, you're going to take that away, you don't think this is going to have an impact on the fish, you're going to submerge these 1,050 foot high, thousands up the coast, you've got to be out of your mind to think that this is okay. Um, sir, you mentioned um, we have no please, please to adjust the chair. The chair, have direct to no the chair. We have no proof that the whales and the dolphins are dying. I ask you a question: Why do they need incidental take permits? The developer goes and 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 files for an incidental take permit. They need the permits because it's proved. There is proof. Look in the BOEM environmental impact statements. It says, it says that it could harm, it could kill. It's in there. Read the environmental impact statement. My information does not come from Facebook and misinformation. My information comes from reading. I read the environmental draft impact statement. There are a million, there are tons, not a million, there are thousands of questions. They don't know. There's, there's the question about, um, radar and um national security go in there it talks about national security read the, the impact environmental impact statement yourself don't get your information from the outside get in it it is long it is tedious but you gotta you gotta it's one day we're gonna be gonna go well we told you so and you're all gonna go but we didn't read it i'm telling you to read it and stop this right now we have the most magnificent coast this is the gem our ocean is thriving. I remember when there were dirty needles. I'm not going to tell my age, but I was up in North Jersey near Sandy Hook when I was a little kid. It was filthy. There was red tide. We have never had such a magnificent ocean. Why in the world would anybody in their right mind think that this is going to work? A solution to a problem is not a solution if it causes great environmental impact. And do some studies. Look at Overseas, the impacts overseas are detrimental. Thank you for this. So I'm going to follow the On the resolution. My name is Dan Lawler. I'm from Walford, New Jersey. I'm one of the commissioners there. On behalf of James Lee, Commissioner Lee, and myself, we are here to support the resolution and say that Walford's borough is back in the market. It's, we've been getting emails for the last two years about this when it was really under the radar and we were knowing about it. Yeah. And I would have to say it was a 50 50 call. 50 percent of people were for it and 50 were not. Now that's coming out, it seems to be turning the tide. There's a lot more people against it. It's a very heated issue, as you could just see. Um, people get very upset about it. They're one way or the other. It's not really a real thing going on. So 
we, I just wanted to come over and say that Longport is behind the resolution. Let's see if we can postpone this. Hopefully, we'll be able to stop it. I don't know if it's going to be able to happen, but uh, I'm here to say the Longport supports it. And on the record, our mayor, is a, Mr. Nick Russo, is is for it. So I just want to I want to get that out there. He he supports my decision and James Lee's decision on it. But I just want to make that for the record. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Mrs. Phillips. Ann H. Phillips, concerned resident of Brigantine. First, a recommendation. Please take some money and put it in your budget for microphones, one for each of you, the professionals, and for the speakers. Brigantine is a Good big idea. This is a big county, and we have excellent accommodations for other meetings. So, excellent. <laughs> First, I thank board members John Risley and Richard Days for sponsoring this resolution. If the board supports it, members will take another step in fighting the embedding for decades of a gargantuan industrial power plant in the Atlantic Ocean within view miles inland in this county and other coastal counties. It is a fight worth the effort. More and more people are learning the magnitude of the harmful, unnecessary, long-lasting, expensive consequences of these projects and the facts of how all of this has happened and where we are today. I call the board's attention to the excellent, knowledgeable letter to Orsted in the May 16th Brigantine Times from Michael Dean of Monmouth County and Apostolus Gerosilis of Long Beach Island, and to the notices in this week's Times and the Shore Local Newspaper concerning public meetings by the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. And we urge you to contact the board and express your opinion. Also, I urge you to use the law to defend, defeat these projects. It is, this is a legal issue, and that is where our road should lead. This is a challenge we must meet and overcome. It makes sense to partner with, partner with others in this fight, and I suggest right now Cape May County, which I believe reading the articles in the paper is doing an excellent job in working legally to defeat these projects. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Virginia L. Halk. I'm from Brigantine. I was born in Atlantic City a long time ago. I'm going to read a, a quotation from uh, John F. Kennedy. We are tied to the ocean, and when we go back to the sea, whether it's to sail or to watch it, we are going backwards whence we came. Uh, I, in all due respect, I thank you for this time to be able to speak my feelings. I beg you to pass this resolution. I'm reading a little bit from the Bone Report. I am not reading from just hearsay. The Bone Report, which is so immense, has so many facts in it that would actually, if we'd read it, they tell us what they're going to do. And if they do it, they're going to say, see, we told you we're going to do it. I won't read all of it. The project allows for taking, another word for death or injury, of 102 whales, 6,016 dolphins, 4,063 porpoises, 92, 924 seals. Here. The project resulted in the fatalities of thousands of birds, 1 million by the year 20, 2030. Rather. The projects installing hundreds upon hundreds of wind turbines, not windmills, off our beaches will be, have significant adverse effect for all breach goers at the New Jersey shore and will be seen 40 miles away. They tell us this. This is not just like uh, little things that people just talk about. The project is located in the middle of eons of old migratory paths of many species of birds. 
We don't talk about birds and even the bats that we need for the, the system. Our whole economic, all, our whole, it, it's, it's a cycle of life. The project is located right in the middle of the uh, migration uh, such as the flounder and striped bass. The multi-billion energy producing project is located in an area that has been visited by numerous powerful hurricanes in the past. And they named Hazel, Felix, Floyd, Irene, Sam's, and Sandy. The project will harm commercial fishing. The project will harm recreational fishing. The project will harm established clam beds. The project will likely harm offshore wind patterns. And it will also affect the humidity patterns. And the noise will be louder than a rock concert. And yes, they will have lights on them. And they will be visible. And they do not turn or go away at night. They stay on red, flashing. The project will be nearly 5,000 boat trips for installation and maintenance. The project will require 2,278 helicopter trips per year. Massive trenching of the seabeds up to six feet to bury hundreds of miles of enormous electrical cables. This is all in their pro what they say they're going to do. And all the electrical currents, they believe they will, they will create strong EMFs that will harm crabs, lobsters, and other shellfish. In my opinion, the will factor of destroying our four billions of beauty in, our only, in only a few years alone constitutes such an ill-conceived action that I barely can believe someone would come up with such a proposal. This their success requires that our open horizon exists no more and is replaced by an immovable wall of unsightly wind turbines. I will add my last quotation. Get to it. Thank you. Here is your, this is from Clear Door Roosevelt. Here is your country. Cherish those natural wonders. Cherish the natural resources. Cherish history and romance as sacred heritage for your children and your children's children. Do not be let selfish men or greedy interest. Skin your country of its beauty, its riches, or its romance. Thank you. Anyone else? Please? I'm Eileen Barker from Atlantic City. I just want to thank you so much. That was so beautiful. And um, I, I, I just, okay, first of all, I want to say that it's really important that we don't get mixed up. People keep saying that we're against the turbines so or we're against green energy, but we have to make it clear that green energy, that the turbines are not green energy, and that, um, it's not qualified, so we're, we are, I mean, we show that we're all for saving the environment, but that's not the way to do it. So I actually bought a picture from the internet. This is a picture of one turbine that is going from the factory to the highway. And I live in Lake City, and this is what they're supposed to be taking the turbines. Is there any way that... You can pass it. You can pass it. Like to pass it, give it to the attorney. Thank you, from the man. Thanks. You're welcome. See how huge it is, and to think that this would be going down the highway in, in Atlantic County and also into Atlantic City. So, um, I'm pleased to ask you to pass this resolution. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Kristen, do we have anyone online? No? Okay. Very good. Very good. Anyone else like to speak? I'm Jerry Seach uh, from Brigantine. Um, I want to second the motion that Ann Phillips gave to the board here. You guys really need a microphone? 
we couldn't hear anything back there. And that, that does a disservice to us citizens because we want to listen to other points of view. And if we don't hear them, we're in the dark in how to respond to them. So if my remarks don't fit exactly, it's because of that. And I also appreciate, I know a lot of us are on opposite ends of, of the discourse on today's agenda, but I appreciate the nonpartisan, generally nonpartisan point of view and the <clears throat> restraint that people have had who feel very strongly about these, uh, about this recommendation for the um, wind farms. I urge you not to delay it. I think for a number of reasons. I didn't come up here with a lot of data. I've read a lot of data. I actually am involved with a lot of this environmental stuff myself on a personal level and a professional level. I just want to say one thing. The climate change is occurring. We're not arguing politics. We're not talking about who caused the climate change. The climate change is affecting us very drastically. Look at the fires up in Canada, the fires in California, the tornadoes in mid United States. All of these events are beyond norm. And so to me as a person and for any progeny beyond me, we got to look to the future to protect them. And to protect them, we have to act now. And so that's why I urge you not to delay it. Now, there's been a lot of arguments brought up today. Uh, I'll summarize it in three, three kind of general arguments. One is about, and I'll keep within the time frame. Uh, one of the arguments is about the, the view. It will ruin our view. The second argument is about the whales and other mammals. And the third argument is about the economics of it. Um, I own an ocean property. I've been very lucky in my life. I've been able to get property that sees the ocean. To me, I would rather give up some of that view for the future because in the future, this coastline will not exist if we don't stop the climate change that is occurring. It's catastrophic. And so I don't think that's a valid argument from my perspective. The argument about the whales, um, I dearly love and I support most animal abuse and animal rights organizations in my uh, foundation. I don't see the arguments that are being presented to give any credence to the view that the windmills are causing these whales deaths. We go historically back 10 years, there are no more deaths than there were six, seven, eight years ago. That's a fact. That's what's been, this has been uh, publicized by the government agencies. And thirdly, the economic part of it, uh, there's some argument there. I think there's some validity to it. We don't know the costs. We think it'd be mitigated, but we don't know that. Um, the, it does bring a tremendous amount of employment in this area and in uh, the, I guess, the north part of the southern part of New Jersey in terms of jobs. And I think that's very important for the economy of our state and for the nation. So I just want to say, to me, the overriding factor is climate change. And that's why I urge you to not delay the construction at this time. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Hi everyone. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for at least entertaining this um, kind of delay in this whole process. Um, I would just like to say that this is a huge undertaking that can't be easily completed. So it's not like we can do this and then go back and undo it. So before it's done, it needs to be really researched. I would say that I'm an environmentalist, like you know. <clears throat> Patrick, you are, we probably are an all in this room, environmentalist. But, you know, this is a quintessential case of fixing one thing and breaking another. So, um, I also think, I don't know if giving up our entire Jersey Shore um, is going to have any impact. 
going overall global warming. So until I see that, then that would help. But to me, I just think this is just too big of a thing to just go ahead and do this without, you know, understanding what all the impact is. Because once you put those things up, they are not coming down. And future generations deserve to have the ocean preserved for them. So that's how I think. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Anyone else? Well, I'm from outside of the county. Okay, so I think go ahead. Okay, now go ahead. All right. I'm Doug Crawford from Ocean City, New Jersey, not Maryland. Um, so, uh, what I just heard about the the global warming, um, there is significant discussion of what's causing climate changes today. So that is not a settled thing. And if you even do accept that, that <clears throat> CO2 levels and humans are causing it, and that these wind turbines might be an alleviation of that, uh, I have a quote from, from the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, Appendix A of the Vineyard Wind Project Final Environmental Impact Statement. Now these professionals, they say, quote, there will be no collective impact on global warming as a result of offshore wind projects. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jobs. Okay, let's create busy work. You know, let's let's employ people to build these things out here that will last less than 20 years. We'll spend a lot of money doing it. We'll wreck the whole ocean floor. We'll put the whole East Coast at risk with radar interference. Maybe that even means threat detection. Okay, spinning wheels create interference to, to radar detection. Uh, so, wow, and then can't believe. Okay, let me go on to a couple other subjects. First of all, if this is wind energy versus oil, that is a totally false straw man kind of thing. There are lots of other alternatives than industrializing our ocean and destroying our whole way of life out there. I did one analysis. I can't say this is absolutely for sure. It's food for thought for all of you. I did a cost analysis taking into account the cost of the New Jersey wind port, the conversion of the grid, the building of the turbines, the maintenance of the turbines over 15 or 20 years, and the decommission costs. And you know what? It adds up to a figure that's less than putting solar on every home in New Jersey. Every home with battery. And that means the electric generated by the home stays at the premises and the grid doesn't need upgrading at all. Nobody's looking at that. There could be errors in it. I put a lot of time into thinking about it. There's lots of alternatives. You don't need to destroy the coast to do this. Thank you, That's sir. Uh, anyone else from Atlantic County wants to speak this time? There was one lady from Fork of River. You want to speak, ma'am? She's in the back. She's on the chair of it. Ma'am, do you want to speak, ma'am? Speak to you. No, you. From Fork and River. She's coming, Mr. Chandler. And then we'll wrap it up. My eldest one this morning. My father got Oh, anyone else from Atlantic County? I apologize. Okay. I'll start again. <laughs> guys. Um, my name is Sunny Vargas. I'm representing the New Jersey Windworks Coalition that has about 18 different members. Oh, yes. Uh, I live in at Seven Nautilus Boulevard in Torquay River. That is Lacey Township in Ocean County. So I just want to thank you guys for your time this evening. I wanted to first state in regards to the whale situation that the Assembly Committee for Science, Innovation, and Technology already held a full bipartisan assembly hearing on the causes of whale deaths off our coast. So this was live streamed to the public. Everyone is available to view this information. And a few really like big things stuck out to us. Um, 
So expert during, experts during this hearing pointed out the influx of whales to our coast is due to a variety of factors. So whether that be because we clean up our act off of our coast and we have much cleaner waters, we are just seeing an influx of different kinds of whales living and staying off of New Jersey waters. One of the other surprising factors was that juvenile whales are also staying off our coast longer periods. So these young whales are not sexually mature. They're not going down to the Bahamas to get it on. Um, they're staying here all year. And they're also inexperienced feeders. So that means that they tend to stay at the top one third of the water column, which gives them more time to actually interact with vessels. So what's known as floaters is when whales kind of just hang out at the top of the water and you can see their back. This is happening more and more as we're having more whales off our coast. So this is just something to consider. Another thing that I wanted to bring up that they found as well is that these whales are also following menhaden or bunker fish that most folks know because they go crabbing. They're following that fish closer into the water, so coming closer to the coastline, which is also a big, uh, like, catastrophic incident for them to interact with vessels at that point if they're coming closer to the shoreline. So that were two things that really stuck out there that during that assembly hearing, and it was public information. Additionally from that, um, because this was an extensive hearing and experts really explained a lot, they also really went into the sonar and the type of survey work that's being used. So there were bioacousticians that were there. They explained that the survey work and anything that's related to sound going on for offshore wind is not harmful to marine life. So I just wanted to reiterate that, and I know that that's public information, and I'd be happy to help provide it to any of the commissioners that are here. I'm speaking. Um, I would also encourage the commissioners to reconsider and submit a letter to BOEM on behalf of Atlantic County and its residents. If there are questions and concerns, I think you should be heard. You should be able to do that. But I think a moratorium or extending the comment period isn't going to be able to accomplish what some folks in here might think it would accomplish. But I do understand it's a lengthy document to DEIS. Um, but yeah, I know I'm running out of time, so I apologize if I can just finish up. One offshore wind project, I know some folks have claimed it's not going to do much, but that quote was misquoted from Bohm. Offshore wind will help to remove about 21.6 metric tons of carbon from the atmosphere. So as we phase off fossil fuel projects, um, I myself live near the Oyster Creek nuclear facility. As other projects come, come offline and we invest in clean energy, it will ultimately help the climate. So thank you. Okay. Any uh, comments online? Kristen, no. You'd like to speak? Go ahead, ma'am. Sir? Okay. Hello. My Hello. name is Christine Muzzolo. I'm from Brigantine, New Jersey. Um, the one thing that I really wanted to mention, and it was said over here, is that people that people have known about this for years. That is absolutely incorrect. We have not known about this for years. We talk to people all day long, every day in Brigantine, and they are clueless as to what's happening. First of all, they'll go on and they'll say, it's a little blip off in the distance. It's not. But people are not aware. This was done very sneaky through the dead of night behind everybody's backs. And people do not know. People are starting to know now because of the summer coming up. You know, people are down at the shore more. But before that, it five months ago, I knew nothing about this. Knew nothing. So it is that is not a, that is not clear. The other thing I wanted to say about there's there's health concerns not only for the fish, the mammals, but there's health concerns for people that we haven't even addressed, talked about. And that is very concerning to me. I listened to a lady who did low, um, she did a study, a 30 year study on low vibration frequencies. And she talked about, and she gave, she gave pictures and renderings of what is happening over in Europe, where people are actually building walls next to their houses to prevent the low frequencies from coming in. They're having epileptic seizures, anxiety, the list is endless. When I got off of this hour long study by this woman, I, I looked at my husband and I said, do we sell our house? This is a house that we've worked really hard for. And I said, I, I'm willing to give it up. This is a nightmare. So I beg you and I thank you for doing what you're doing. And you know, this is going to affect us very negatively for a very long time. 
And it's something to note that whales actually take out CO2 out of the atmosphere. As a, they're equivalent to 1,500 trees a year. They are the lungs of the ocean. We need these mammals. And if you go on to Boehm, it tells you hundreds, it's like 178,000 takes for these particular um, things up and down the coast of whales, dolphins, fish that they can kill. And it's not a big deal. It, does, it just doesn't make any sense. I want clean and green energy. This is not it, unfortunately. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm John Foreman, uh, Avalon. Uh, I live in Avalon. I, I, uh, I work at Atlantic City at a Thunder Space in my commercial fish. <laughs> the idea that this is like green is I, I, I go past all these these survey boats all the time, and uh, now they run a thousand gallons a day. First time I get them out there, it's probably you know the idea that big wind and big oil are like kind of different. I think too, like you're like. Oh, to be oil. Like, my mom told me when I was a kid, two moms don't make it right. So, you should be fighting. Speak of us. I think that uh, we're skirting a fine line right now. When we move forward with this, I'm afraid it'll be the beginning. It won't really affect me. I'll probably be long gone, but I feel sorry for a lot of the uh, children. I've been really blessed. I've been out there. I've seen it all. But, uh, yeah. Also, too, uh, you know, like live like working out in Atlantic City and like being in Atlanta County and my community, I pick up a lot of trash. And Atlantic City, like, no, like, I don't mean to sound rude, but like, you guys have stomachs. Not the idea that like you're going to sit down and preach about how you need it, like, you can't keep the trash all day. Like, it was land blowing up. How good. All right. Anyone online? No? Okay. One more. Please. One more, and then we're going to wrap it up. My name is Catherine Finnegan. I'm from Brigantine, New Jersey. I want to thank you for considering the resolutions and the changes to the moratorium. I don't quite fully understand them because even though I was in the front, I still couldn't hear everything you guys were saying. But um, I just want to ask, as you consider your vote that lies ahead, want you to all con to consider your constituents, the people in Atlantic County who voted you into office. Please do not only take into consideration the demands of the wind companies, our state leadership, and our board of public utilities, or our union members. I write articles for some of our local publications. I do it as a volunteer. I do it to get the word out, because um, Mr. Patrick quoted uh, Media Matters, but the media doesn't really report what's going on with all of this. Um, I wrote an article in Shore Local this past week. I don't know if any of you saw it. These aren't exactly my own words. They are the words of the DEIS from Boehm for the Atlantic Shores Project. And uh, it is full of what they call proposed action descriptions, and that's the construction and operations of the turbine projects. And then they go on and on about what they call, quote unquote, potential unavoidable adverse impacts of the proposed action. And there's a ton of them, and they're all in that DEIS. You got to sort through a lot. My article just touched on a little bit of it. So if you haven't read it, please do. Um, but I want to let you know that when people read this, my phone blew up. I got text messages, messages to my social media account, emails. Um, people didn't know this stuff. Many people are not going to read through the 6,000 page document. And when they read this, they were saddened and angered and some were outraged. And they just are overwhelmed with disbelief that this is all going to happen to our Jersey Shore. So we really need you moving forward to advocate for the folks who voted for you. And I encourage you to go out and talk to the people where you live, not just at these public comment meetings, but go out to the farmers markets, walk the beaches and talk to people and see what they really think. I will tell you that many of them aren't for this. Um, sure, local gets a uh, circulation of 15,000 people throughout several towns. Yeah. I think that's why I got a lot of feedback on this this week. So 
just putting that out there. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Kim O'Brien, 511 7th Street, Summers Point. Um, I want to thank the commission for listening to everyone tonight and giving us extended time. Um, that's our democracy in action, so I think that's a lovely thing to see. I think we can all agree that the whales don't care what political party anybody said. I'm an animal lover. I grew up in North Wildwood. We have family in Canada. And when we go on whale watching tours, they get so close to the boat that you can see their eyes. It's really awe-inspiring. At the same time, as our ocean waters are warming, that won't pick and choose the effects either. We're all in this together in terms of solving global warming and the problems it's causing. So here's what I want to say. There was a request made to uh, the Government Accountability Office to further study this issue for us. It was accepted. It's happening no matter how any of you vote today. My question for the board is, when those findings come out, and they said 90 days, which will be approximately the end of summer, will this commission support a resolution to accept those findings? That will be determined at that time. That's all I can tell you. I okay. can't tell you how somebody's going to vote. You know. My question really is just in hopes that we keep this as a bipartisan effort to determine what's best for the county. This is an issue that's been studied. Further study was requested. It was accepted. It's going to be happening by a neutral party. And so I, I hope that that will allow us to go forward. It's causing a lot of divisiveness, and I don't think any of us want that either. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Hector Tavares. I'm from Meg Harbor Township. You know, I, I really do enjoy listening to all the different point of views and, and trying to listen to what everybody has to say. But one of the things I really like focusing on is, is, is facts versus non-facts, right? I look at the resolution that you guys are talking about, and one, I suspected if I asked if you to read that resolution back to me right now, you probably could. And I think that most of you probably sitting there, no matter what party you're from, probably agree that that's a problem that you don't even know the resolution that you're going to be voting on. The second problem I have is it seems to be awfully political. Why is my friend Vince Palestina in there? Why is Jeff Van Drew in there? Did, are they helping with the environment? Do they control the environment? You're taking a subject that matters to my children and my grandchildren and your grandchildren and yours and your kid and your kid and your grandchildren, and you're turning it into a political circus. This resolution doesn't mean anything. You guys know that. But yet what it is doing is cre creating divisiveness between us so that we can't actually get to a solution. Here's what I know. Whales died off our coast, and it's horrible. And dolphins died off our coast, and it's horrible. But I hear politically that the only thing that is different is that we're doing the, the windmills off the coast. But in fact, we all know that's not true, right? We just lived through the warmest winter that anybody in this room can attest to. In fact, it was barely a winter. Does that strike anybody as being odd? Oh, yeah. I was cold. Well, of course they were cold. <laughs> but the facts show that it was the warmest winter, winter ever. The facts also show that the whale population, and I quote a, a, a person I talked to today who's on a federal, a federal uh, a board, says that the whale population is at the highest he has ever seen, but cannot testify factually that it is at historic highs. But they're still high. So when we talk about the whales, there is a re reason other than, than the windmills that could cause their deaths, right? But we're not talking about that. What we are talking about is ways to divide good people so that we fight each other instead of coming up with resolutions. 
Listen, I, I am no expert, and I'm sure none of you, and neither any of you, I don't know if the windmills are the right solution. But windmills aren't new. The United States is so far behind the world in windmills that the facts that we want are out there. And instead of just going and getting those facts from countries that have had windmills for decades, we create an atmosphere where we don't know the answers. Of course we know the answers. We're just not asking the right questions, and we're not asking the right people. Your resolution needs to be, A, it needs to be written down so people can see it. I urge you, take the politics out of it. Just take the politics out of it so that we can come up with good, a good response to a problem for our county. And it is a problem. It is a problem. I urge you to take the politics out of it for your children and your grandchildren so that we can move forward in a positive direction, whatever that may be. Apologize for going over. Anyone else like to speak? I wasn't going to speak, but I think uh, listening to everyone come up here to speak, I have to. My name is Cindy Picara, I'm from Brigantine. Thank you all for having this meeting. This resolution is very complex. Um, I just have one thing to say. We may or may not ever know what's causing the mammal's death. I have come to believe that that's, that's going to be the end answer. We will not know. I want the commissioners to please think of this. As humans, we have polluted our air, polluted the earth that we walk upon, and now we want to pollute the ocean to try to correct the damage from the first two. It doesn't seem to make any sense. Thank you. Okay, looks like we're complete here. So no one online, correct? All right, and then it's time for us to vote that. Mr. Chairman, yes. Before the vote, let me first of all commend the public for again coming out. Uh, certainly, here you know, I don't have to agree with everything you've said, but certainly I appreciate you coming out and making your concerns known. However, let me reiterate what I said a few weeks, a few months ago when this resolution came up. This board does not have the authority. I said that from the door. The power scene and the rest of them were playing the politics. I said that nothing has changed to that fact. But I think the public ought to be heard. And wherever the facts lead, that's where the facts are going to lead. And so, again, I support the windmills. You have your opinion. I have my opinion. And at the end of the day, we hope we can find some real common grounds. Um, when you talk in terms of politics, um, politics does make some strange bit more. Right. And in politics, we should be able to agree to disagree and it should not have to be disagreeable. But when it becomes personal, folks begin to attack people because you don't like their comments and you don't like what they said or where they stand. That's when it gets real ugly and nasty. Um, but just the fact that you came out. Made us understand your concerns, whether you're for or against. Um, and that's your opinion. You have that right. Um, but at the end of the day, again, this board, this county, uh, as the gentleman stated earlier, they have no authority. It's, and, and I made the statement, so whoever the young lady was, I made the statement that this did not happen overnight. This has been going on for a while. Whether you know about it or not, it's been going on, right? And so this board, this is probably the only time they're going to agree with me. They damn sure wasn't involved in it. It happened overnight. They, I mean, they was not a part. Uh, when it hit the counties and the states, it came from the feds, right? And it, it worked its way down. Um, politics got involved in elections. When folks have gotten endorsements taken away from because they supported either the, the, the windmills or against the windmills, it all become political and become politics. And so um, you were tied to your opinion, and I, I respect that. Um, but again, it is my humble opinion that uh, at the end of the day, whether you try to do a moratorium or not, it doesn't go anywhere here. Um, again, I'm going to support the resolution because the word moratorium was taken out. I had no intent on supporting the resolution. 
uh, with moratorium in there, but I do believe that the public should be able to get some additional information. You might not like what you get, but you're entitled to have it. Um, that's my position, and uh, Mr. Chairman, that's where I stand. Anyone else like to talk on this uh, resolution before we vote? I think we heard a lot about, uh, Mr. Chair, I think we heard a lot about there not being enough teeth in the resolution, and, and I'll push back on that just a little bit. I think that the teeth are there. As you hear, this body doesn't have the authority to um, to stop, to create a moratorium to stop the project. But what we do have, we have a voice. And so by expressing our voice, once you guys express your voice to us, and then we vote on this resolution and we send it to the places where it goes, then they have an opportunity to either ignore us, which sometimes they do, a lot of times they do, but it's still our obligation to take whatever we hear from our constituents or whatever's going on in, in our area to take that to that next place. If they ignore us, that's on them. Then hold them accountable when you vote for them or don't vote for them. But this board is obligated to take what we're hearing and do something. So we're doing what we can do. So the fact that we're saying we're playing politics, no, we're asking for answers. Exactly what you're asking for is exactly what we're doing. We're asking for answers. We cannot stop it. We know we cannot stop it. So the word moratorium in a resolution wouldn't mean anything anyway. If you remember when it came a few months ago, I was the one that stood up here and said, why are we putting a 90 day shelf life on it? Why don't we just leave it open until we have answers? What makes a whale's life any different than a human life? If it was a human's life in there, will we say there's a 90 day moratorium? Or will we say we're gonna keep on studying it until it's finished? Until we have conclusive evidence that that's not correlated, that the wind turbines aren't correlated to the human death, the loss of life. So to, to say there's a 90 day moratorium, well, what happens at the end of 90 days if it's not conclusive? So I was the person that stood up here alone and said that we shouldn't have put a 90 day moratorium. We should have just said, we're gonna stop this until we have answers. I think that's the right thing to do. Now we're sitting up here. Now we're saying the politics does play into it. Uh, Commissioner, of course, you're absolutely right. Politics does play into it. We cannot force anyone, even with passing the 90 day moratorium, no one has to listen to us. No one has to do what we're telling them to do. So what we've done with this resolution, I think, is all that we can do. It's all that we're able to do to make sure that we're sending a message to whoever's listening, and you heard who we're sending it to, all the offices that we're sending it to, to let them know that the people of Atlantic County and the commissioners board of Atlantic County, we want answers. And we don't think that that's something we should have to ask for. We think that's something that they owe us. They owe us answers to what's happening in our waters. It's not optional. So this is what we this is what we're able to do. All right. So it has the teeth. It has everything that it needs. And let's see what happens. I saw whatever someone asked if once the, the information comes out, once the studies are done, then what? Will we accept it? Absolutely. Once the studies are done, I'll tell you, me personally, I'll accept it. If it comes back that the turbines are not affecting the well, the wells and something else is happening to our to, to the whales and the dolphins and it, it's it, it's it's not connected or correlated in any way, then that's the evidence. That's what it is. Then we'll make decisions at that point based on that information. But as of right now, look at how many different sources have been cited tonight. Look at how many different experts have presented information in at the microphone tonight, the non-microphone. Look how many how many different opinions are here in the room tonight. So it, it's it's not conclusive. We need answers, and it's someone's job to get them to us. I'm not an expert, as you stated. None of us in this room are experts. So the experts owe us answers. So what we're doing tonight is telling them we want the answers, and if they ignore us, then we go from there. Anyone else like to speak? Just one thing. Yes. I don't know if anybody remembers in the very late 80s, maybe 1988, 89, 70 dolphins and sharks washed up on the beaches 
And it took four years to find out that there was a new virus, there's something they didn't have any antibodies for. And that's what killed them. It took four years. Just want to say that. Sensing a readiness to vote. I'll have the Tara call the roll. Alice? Yes. Martino? Yes. Orsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? No. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Yes. Risley? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on with our agenda. Under reports of special committees of the board, does anyone like to give a report on a particular committee? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anything under unfinished business? New business. I'd just like to report one thing that uh, I think it was announced today uh, by the county, which is very, very important. Um, extremely important. In fact, our bond rating has again been upheld by Standard and Boards and Moody's. They're two of the largest bond rating agencies. And uh, for Atlantic County to maintain uh, a double A rating is quite spectacular, particularly with all the uh, things we've been faced with. And uh, that's a credit to the consistency. I use the word consistency of administrations of this county going back over the years. And uh, that means a whole lot. Bond ratings mean a whole lot, particularly when we're going out to borrow money for to build additions to schools or whatever we're doing here in the county, any, any structures. So that's a, a wonderful thing. Anything else under new business? Any written communications or petitions? Yes. I'm kind of piggybacking on on the good news that you just mentioned. Um, I think everybody got the letter from our county surrogate, uh, Jim Curcio, um, that they recently had a visitation from the New Jersey Administrative Office of Courts, um, and there was an evaluation. And our Atlanta County Surrogates Office um, and our Vicinage One Probate Court was ranked the number one probate court in the state of New Jersey. And there I think go. that's a testament to the work that um, our surrogate, he's, he's deeply um, ingrained in the work of that office. He's very passionate about it. Thank you. And uh, I think he um, should be recognized for that. And, and his, the members of his office be recognized for that distinction. Absolutely, Commissioner Gatto. And I appreciate you bringing that forward. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, piggybacking off what Amy said, you know, for the next meeting, can we do a uh, citation or yeah. resolution? Recognize his office. Recognize his employees in his office and so forth. That would be nice. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, at this point, then, I'm going to meet, open the meeting to the public about any particular topic you'd like to speak on. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I, I rise to give you thanks and Commissioner Kern and Commissioner Fitzpatrick for attending our first uh, college signing day uh, at the Police Activities League. Um, I think you, when you attended, you saw how appreciative the kids were. And I just want to summarize it. These were 12 kids, eight of which were from Atlanta County, representing a lot of cities uh, throughout the county. They, are some, they were some of the brightest, still are some of the brightest and most intelligent kids that we have to offer. Uh, the six kids or the eight kids that were on our team were three times New Jersey State uh, First Tech Challenge robotic uh, champions, and they finished second in the world this year. And I want to wholeheartedly thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Kearns, Commissioner Fitzpatrick, for taking the two, three hours for, uh, for uh, you know, congratulating them. It was very much appreciated, and they have brought it up several times. So I wanted to public, publicly thank you guys. Thank a lot you. of very talented. Maybe we can bring them in, and they can show you the robot, so that the rest of you can be amazed with their work. So I don't know how we go about setting that up, but I would love to bring them in. All right, thank you. Okay. Any other members of the public? Yes, sir. Brian Brown, 
uh, President Bill. I just wanted to follow up on the May 16th meeting. Has there been any other information or inquiries as it relates to ACCC and the machinations that were going on? Uh, you have anything to follow up on? Um, yes, sir. Um, I have had discussions uh, with uh, the president of the college, Dr. Gava, and um, she was able to answer a lot of questions for me in regard to some of the things that happened more recently. Uh, I guess you're talking about the baseball thing. Uh, and there's other things as well. Yeah, well, I did look into that, and uh, that person, of course, was uh, terminated. And a, an investigation is still continuing on there. The college did not purchase the uh, microphones and the headsets. Uh, that did not happen. But uh, there's going to be more information, I'm sure, coming out. Um, we do have a committee set up of this board. And we're going to be meeting with Dr. Gaba very, very soon. We're picking dates right now. We're settling on dates. So... Uh, I'm on it. Let me let me just say, say this, sir. I'm on it. We're on it. Thank you very much. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Can we not anything for the good of the order? Mr. We, Chairman? Yes. Before we leave, um, at the next meeting, I'd like our solicitor to prepare a resolution and it could be sponsored by all commissioners. If you notice that Young lady from Northfield, one Miss New Jersey. Yes, yes. And maybe we can get it to the next meeting. The okay. office could reach out. Super. Good idea. Go to the order. Microphones. Yes. yes. We'll put it on the list, Tara. I saw Diana taking notes. She was right there. So they said, <laughs> taking notes about Yeah, she was right. Do you want your picture back? And, uh, and I hope that um, next Thank meeting you. is July. Big. And uh, we got to pick some blueberries for National Blueberry Month. There might be a couple. Of, <laughs> I might be able to scrounge up a couple of grapes here and there. I'll tell you to look at it. Anything else? Mr. Chair, um, I just, because it's bothering me, I just want right. to state for the record um, a member of the public said that we don't read or know the contents of our resolutions. And I do. I do want to say for the record that I read every resolution I'll listen to you. and uh, not listening to you. I don't really care. I want the record to reflect right. that we know what's in the resolutions. And I take offense to the fact that said to say that we don't know what's in our resolutions. Thanks, you. I agree with you. And that's, and that's why Amy, I had our solicitor read it. So mm -hmm. we would know. And also the, Public would know. Yeah, I mean, we're still in the middle of a meeting, but it's okay. Karen, okay. Karen, sorry, we're so, I'm so sorry. All right, anything else under the good of the order? <laughs> if not, I understand a motion for adjourned. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. We are adjourned.